Hi, I'm Chrissy of Letters by Chrissy, and I'm going to show you how to digitize your hand lettering. How to go from this image to this image. As you can see, we're going to be using Photoshop to do this. So the first thing to do is to open the scan or photograph of your lettering. I have this photo. The aim of all of the initial tasks in Photoshop is to clean the lettering and to remove the background. Then we can add whatever background we want. First, we'll make sure that everything is straight and in line. To do this, make sure that your rulers are showing. If they're not, you can hit Command R to show them. Then we'll drag in horizontal and vertical guides. I just have a little bit of vertical sort of warping because of the angle that I took the photo on. So I'm going to try and fix that up. If you see anything wonky that you'd like to change, uh, we'll need to unlock the layer. In the layers panel, double click on it and press enter. Then we can move the layer around in different ways. Press command T to bring up the transform box and right click and press warp. This will allow you to move different areas of the lettering into place so that they're in line with the guides that you've drawn. When you're happy with that, press enter. And then you can press Command H to hide the guides. And press Command R to toggle the rulers off if you like. Next, we'll adjust the levels to get the most possible contrast in the image. This will make removing the background easier later. To bring up the Layers panel, hit Command R. I mean L, <laughs> Command L. Make the whites of your image whiter by dragging this right slider to the left and make the blacks of the image blacker by dragging the left slider towards the right. Now we're going to make the image black and white, which will make the end result cleaner and easier to work with. Press Command U to bring up the hue and saturation panel and drag the saturation slider all the way to negative 100. The next thing we're going to do is See if there's anything obvious to erase using the eraser tool. Um, in order to use this the most effectively, we'll add a layer underneath the lettering layer and then just go to town. If there's any eraser marks or pencil marks especially, or as you can see, I'm erasing the background of my photo. You can hit Command E um, for your eraser tool or just click on it over here. You can also use the square brackets to change the size of the eraser. Now we're ready to erase the background of the image. In order to do this as thoroughly as possible, we're going to fill this blank layer with a bright, darkish sort of colour. So select your colour and then press G on your keyboard to select the gradient tool um, or the paint bucket tool and fill the layer by clicking it. Now we're going to go back to our lettering layer and use the select colour range tool to erase the background. I've set up a shortcut for this tool because I use it so much. I use Command Shift R. You can set your own shortcut for any tool oh, whoops, by going to Edit Keyboard Shortcuts. In any case, get into the Color Range panel and set your threshold to 120 to start off with. Um, use the eyedropper tool that comes up to click anywhere on your background that you want to erase and you should be able to see your lettering come up here. Press enter to accept that 
and delete to get rid of that amount of colour. Now, it's basically a matter of trial and error with this tool. As you can see, it's erased a bit of my lettering. So I'm going to undo that, go back in um, to the Select Color Range tool and make the threshold lower so that it hopefully won't erase any of my lettering. See, that's much better. There are still a few little parts that are being erased though. So the way that I'm going to fix this is by making more contrast between the lettering and the background. There are a couple of ways that you can try to do this. The first is by using the burn tool and you can set it to burn shadows or midtones, whatever you need to, to make your lettering darker, but the background the same. So you can use that tool or you can go back into the layers panel and make the blacks blacker and the whites whiter again. That will probably help as well, just depending what your lettering is like in terms of the shades. Go back into your um, color range panel a few times just so that you get the cleanest result that you can. So there's still some debris around here that I want to get rid of and that will really help with that. And because of these areas that I erased here there's this faint line so I'm going to try and get that as well. Now, my lettering is done with watercolours, and that's why I want it to look with variations and shades rather than being just a block colour. But if you have lettering which is all black, there's a really important extra step that you can do here. When you think you've gotten rid of all of the background, the last thing to do is open the layers panel, um, sorry, the levels panel, and drag the black slider all the way across to the right hand side. That will make all of your lettering dark, so the only colour in this image now is black. Having it all one colour means you can adjust that colour really easily. You can invert the colours, um, so in that case, in this case, make the lettering white by pressing Command I. Um, I might have set that shortcut, I'm not sure, so if nothing happens to you it's in Image, Adjustments, Invert. Um, so yeah, Control I will do that for me. And if you want to change the colour to something other than black and white, just move the colourful background layer above the lettering layer, hold the Alt key or the Option key down, and when you see this little black arrow appear, click, and that will fill your lettering layer with whatever colour is in here. So you can change that colour around, and it will just change the colour of your lettering. You can also do cool things there like um, place a photo onto that layer so then your lettering will have like a picture in it. Yeah, you can do lots of cool things there. When you're happy with the colour of your lettering, you are finished with it. Now it's time to open the image that you want for your background. Once that's open, go back to your lettering file and select whichever layers you want, then press Command Shift D to duplicate the layer. It'll ask you where you want to duplicate it to. I'm going to duplicate it to the background so that it shows up here. Press Command T to move it around, just like we did before with the warping. Place it wherever you want. And when you're done with that, you are finished.